So far this week in doing these Lightroom holiday kind of graphical ideas and almost templates in a way. Uh, so far we've been using um, a large graphic with a frame of some sort that a photo fits in. This time around we're going to kind of take a little switch and just use smaller graphics that are almost supporting where the photo is still kind of the main star of the image and we just kind of add some other graphics. Okay. All right. So uh, let's start off here. And, and as we as we jump into this here, um, I, I've said it before, but I just kind of want to reiterate is that the, these are ideas that I hope extend beyond Christmas because you know they're they're very limited in that, but you can use these ideas for anything. And I hope I hope as you see what the possibilities are that you start to see that you can use graphics from anything, not just the holidays. All right, so I did a search for Christmas graphics on iStock Photo, and what I liked is, is I found an image that's got a lot of potential because it's got a whole bunch of different graphics graphics in it. Okay, it's got these little kind of corner graphics over here, uh, bow with bells, holly. It's got a lot of graphics that we can extract from it so we can use and make a lot of different images with something like this versus anything that just had one graphic on it. Now I did download a bow, but here's an example. That's just one graphic. It's got one use and it's got a, I think it's a pretty neat use, but We'll see both of them in this tutorial here. All right, so they all start in Photoshop. We got to extract this stuff. I take the lasso tool and I'll just make a selection, a very loose selection around one of the graphics here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to File New and then I'm just going to paste it into this new image and I'm going to flatten the layer. Just go to Layer, go all the way down to the bottom, go Flatten Image. Okay, so everything's on one layer. Now we got to select it. So we go Select Color Range. I just take the eyedropper, I click on the background, and I set the fuzziness to about 40. Click OK. So now I have the white selected. I just need to flip that. So we'll go to Select Inverse. So now the graphic is selected, and I just press Command-J on the Mac or Control-J on the PC, and that will punch it up onto its own layer. Okay, so now it's got transparency behind it, and that's what we're looking for here. In order where we want to use it, it's going to be similar to what we did in Monday's video. In order to the place that we want to use it, we need everything to be transparent. All right, so here's a trick from Monday. Edit fill. Fill this with 50% gray. Now I can start to see that white fringe that's left over, and a way to get rid of that is we click on the layer with the graphic on it, not the background layer and go layer, it's all the way down at the bottom, you can't see it on screen here, matting, remove white mat sometimes works, it didn't work so well in this example, but I'm gonna go layer matting, this one usually works pretty good if, if white mat doesn't, and that's called defringe. It's gonna pop open a dialog, just hit one, and yeah, see, look at that, take a look at the difference, before, after, that's a big difference, so uh, that little defringe option, if remove white mat doesn't work, defringe usually works really well. So now I have it all on its own background. Delete that background layer. Go File, Save As, and I'll just call this um, Swirly. And I'll change the, remember, we want to preserve the transparency, so I have to save it as a PNG. Okay, so Swirly.png, I'll hit Save. And I'm also going to do this. I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm also going to save it as a JPEG, because that way, I can also use it in the print module. And also, if I say also one more time, you're gonna shoot me. Um, but I can use it in the print module too because you can't use PNGs in the print module. You can only use those in the watermarking panel. I know it's, it gets convoluted, but you can use JPEGs in, in the print module. So I'll save them both that way. All right, so we got those. Next up, let's go to the bow, okay? I need to select this. I'll take the quick selection tool, make a very quick selection here. Whoop. Not that quick. All right, everything looks good. I'll hit Refine Edge, turn on Smart Radius, drag it up halfway. It usually cleans everything up nicely. And I'll hit OK. And then again, Command-J on the Mac, Control-J on the PC, puts it up onto its own layer. Now, I am going to do a little trick with this because if you were to imagine putting this over an image, it's pretty... It, that where would the photo go, right? The, the photo wouldn't have much, much of a place to fit. So we can just come over here and we can extend. I can select and copy and then paste. And so now what I have is I have a part of that bow on its own layer. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to move it down. 
okay? And let's go to image, reveal all. And so now I've kind of extended it a little bit. And uh, it looks like we need to free transform just a hair because it looks like it was, uh, looks like it kind of was a little bit bigger. Okay, press enter or return. And we do have a seam there. You could see that, that seam that goes across. I just take the eraser tool and not so well, move it up a little bit. I just take the eraser tool and kind of just erase away that seam. Okay, and if it happens to look like a repeating pattern, um, it looks like, see that the bow gets bright here and then very, very slightly it gets darker down here. Well then, Command or Control M will go into curves and let's just bring it down, it'll darken that bottom part just a little bit. So it continues to get darker instead of bright, dark, bright, dark again. Just move that curve just down very slightly. Hit OK. All right. Okay, so let's crop this and let's save this one. So we'll save it both ways. We'll save it as a PNG and a JPEG. All right. So we'll call this bow JPEG. Sure, replace it. I'm good with that. And then one more time. We'll save it as a PNG so we keep the transparency and replace. All right, so now all you gotta do is just import these graphics, the, the JPEGs into Lightroom. Remember the PNGs won't get imported into Lightroom because Lightroom doesn't accept a PNG file, but we're gonna use those in a different place. You can import the JPEGs into Lightroom. Okay, I just drag them in and I, I, I put them into a, a graphics folder, which I talked about in Wednesday's video. So you might wanna go back and check that out too. Okay. so. Now that we got everything going, let's take a look at a couple of different ways to use these. First off, let's go to the file menu. We'll go down to export. All right, we're gonna export a photo. Remember in Monday's video, we talked about the watermarking panel. So we go into edit watermarks, okay? And I choose a PNG. Since I, ha since I have a PNG that was, um, that's got that transparent background. So now I can kind of move this guy around and here's something to keep in mind it's once you resize it you can resize it with your 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 little control handle here but you have to change the anchor if you want to move it around okay so this one's obviously only going to fit in the top right now it'd be very easy in photoshop when you were creating this graphic to go to image rotate flip horizontal and save it and you can get it to go over on the top left if you want to too okay but this one we'll put over here on the top right so that's one idea again you know the 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 star of the image is still the photo itself where in the other ones we were doing a lot of the graphics were, were overpowering we were fitting a photo into a graphic in this example here we're kind of doing the opposite we're fitting part of a graphic into the photo itself okay and again don't forget you can just anchor that into different places and you can reduce the opacity if you wanted to as well so that's one example another example uh, would be and we can come back over here into my watermark. Uh, another example would be, let's choose the bow. Again, we're gonna choose the PNG because that's got the transparency with it so that we can see everything behind it. And we'll anchor that to the top left. Now, this one, this one might not work so well. Uh, I guess maybe if you did that, but I mean, the bow is kind of crazy. What I would have to do to make this work, okay? Um, because the bow is a, is a pretty dominant, so you'd have to have a photo that this really worked for. So what I'd have to do to make this work is remember how I extended out that I'd have to extend it out quite a bit. I'd have to make another selection of this whole part here, copy and paste it down here, make a selection of that whole part, copy and paste it over here and kind of extend that bow out um, pretty significantly to get it to, to fit in the image the way that we want to here. So I'd probably want it right about there. So that, that's still possible. You could do that in Photoshop. Let's take a look at another example at what we can do in the print module. And that is, let's drag a photo out. Okay. And then um, here's another graphic that it, it came from the same group. If you remember when I was, when I was on iStock, if you remember, I had a couple of different ones up here. It came from the same group as this one did. It's just kind of a, a little swirly thing right here just to put at the bottom. Okay. So we'll just move that right to the bottom of the photo. So now you, you have more of a greeting card type of a thing with something like this. So there's an example. Um, and then don't forget, you can put, this one's kind of neat. All right, so let's delete this photo. Let's put, let's put the bow out there. 
I want to show you one little trick too because I got this question the other day. So let's say, let's say I drag a, I drag two images out. The second one that I drag out is always going to be on top of the first one. If I wanted that to be switched, I could click on the photo, right click, and choose send to front. And now the bow goes over the little baby, okay? Or right click and choose send to back. And now it goes behind it. So it, it has layering. It's just in a very different way than, than you're used to using. But what I would do here is just extend that out. And because this was taken on a white backdrop, okay, it kind of fits right into the white of the image that, that we put behind it. So that's another cool idea that you can do with these things. So uh, just a different take and kind of putting together a few of the things that we've learned so far this week um, to make a graphic that's a part of your image versus something that we've you know we've done earlier this week where we created a frame and and we specifically created it so that we could take a photo and put it into that frame and if you haven't seen this one make sure you go back earlier in the week and watch one of those videos as well because that's what we covered there but either way guys uh, i said it in the beginning just kind of keep in mind that, that this is all we're doing it with holiday graphics but hopefully i'm showing you some things that you never really thought of when it comes to sharing and showing off your photos inside of lightroom and how you can use graphics to be able to do that all right well guys my name is matt kleskowski i hope you enjoyed once again and i will talk to you again soon